What is up guys, it is your boy Rob Lane and welcome back to a brand new tutorial video here on the channel. Now my last tutorial video in Sony Vegas did really well with the enabling GPU rendering. I will link that down in the description if you have not seen it and you are a Sony Vegas user because it will help you improve the speed in which you render your videos out. Um, to be honest, I had to stop using Sony Vegas. I really did not like it that much. So I am back in Adobe Premiere Pro today, bringing you guys a brand new tutorial. I'm gonna show you guys how to export your videos in high quality at a faster pace in Adobe Premiere Pro. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I have a very, very good tip that I think a lot of you guys will like that will also make sure that you guys are getting the most out of your GPU here in Premiere Pro when it comes to exporting and rendering your videos. Stay tuned. All right, so here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro. I have a video or a project loaded up. We're gonna skip all of this on how I did this here because maybe a video for that will come later. At this point, I'm just assuming that a lot of you guys know um, how to use Premiere Pro or your basic uh, editing software because if you know that, then you can get to this point in the video and pretty much cut your video. So this video is just gonna be about how to export in high quality videos, 1080p, 60 FPS to be exact. So this is just a teaser of a video that I have coming out. Um, if you watched my last video, the secret here is that I have a brand new YouTube channel dropping vlogs, challenges, reaction videos. The link will be in the description for that as well. Go over there and check it out if you support your boy. All right, so let's get right into this video. So once you have your project and you have your sequence created and your video cut to the way that you like it, you're gonna come up to file here hit export and you're gonna want to export media. Now this is gonna bring you into this export window here with the export settings. And the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is change this format here. It may be on one of these other ones. You're gonna wanna go ahead and change this to H.264. For the preset, we're gonna go ahead and just switch it to custom. That's fine because we'll be making our own custom settings. And we're gonna come down. You have a bunch of tabs here. You have the effects tab, you have the video tab, the audio tab, multiplexer, captions, and publish. Today we're just gonna be focusing on the video tab as well as the audio tab, because for 99% of people, these are probably the only two that you will be worried about. So if we come down here into the video tab, of course you wanna make sure that your resolution here is set to the output and matches the rest of the um, resolution of the clips that you have in your project. In this example, we do have a 1080p video running at 60 FPS. So you're just gonna wanna drop this arrow down here. You can change it between anywhere from 10 to 60 frames per second. So like I said, that is gonna be according to your footage and the clips that you shot. Um, another popular one may be 1080p by 30 FPS. Uh, in this case, like I said, and I do recommend if you have the option to export or render your videos in 60 FPS, especially since YouTube supports it, it's gonna give you guys a very smooth picture and it just makes your videos look that much better. If we come down here to aspects, we're gonna keep this on square pixels. This is the default. If it is set to any of these other ones, just go ahead and set that back to square pixels. You wanna change your profile here to high. Um, this doesn't really make a difference, that much of a difference in my opinion. Some people say that mains for like standard definition and that high is for high definition. So I just stick with high um, to be safe. For level here, now you're gonna want to go ahead and change this to 5.1. This is just gonna help keep that bitrate constant. Now render at maximum depth. This will be for if you have a very high end camera, like if you shot your footage on a RED or Ursa Mini and you have that very high uh, video quality, you're gonna wanna check render at maximum depth. What this is gonna do is give you guys um, videos in 10-bit depth. Now, I'm using a Logitech C922 webcam, so we're not gonna go ahead and check this box, but like I said, for you guys out there using those very expensive cameras like the Reds um, or the Ursa Minis or the Ursa Black uh, Magic, any of the Black Magic cameras, anything like that, you're gonna wanna use render at maximum depth. Now this next step is very, very important. You're gonna wanna make sure that you switch the bitrate setting or the bitrate encoding here to VBR two passes. What that's gonna do is it's gonna render your video, it's gonna do two render passes on your video. That's gonna very um, ensure very high quality videos, especially 
especially if you're making video game videos, uh, video game, yeah, videos, I said that right, with very high motion, like first person shooters, games running at 60 FPS, things like that, these two pass encoding is really gonna smooth out that frame rate and really smooth out that gameplay. Now for the target bit rate, we're gonna aim, if you have a 1080p 60 FPS video, we're gonna aim for 14 megabits per second um, that's the target that we're aiming for. So this is your ideal bit rate. This is what you would prefer the video stay consistent at. Your maximum bit rate, we're just gonna change that to 16. So at any given time, our bit rate can jump between 14 and 16 and we'd be happy with that. Now, if you notice down here, just in relation to the bit rate, the file size of your video does correlate with the bit rate. Now, bit rate does mean better quality. Um, but it also means larger file size. Now, as far as uploading your videos to the web and to YouTube, they're gonna compress your videos even further once you upload it. So 14 megabits per second and 16 is actually a little bit overkill for um, this quality of video, but it's gonna ensure that you get a very high quality video. Now, if I just turn this up, for example, you'll notice if we put that on 70,000, our video just went from 121 megabytes to 601 megabytes. So this is gonna very, this is gonna dictate the size um, of your video. So this is gonna give you, I say 14 and 16 here on your targeted maximum bit rate. It's gonna give you a good balance between a very high quality output video that's already pre-compressed and easy to upload to YouTube, as well as um, a smaller file size that you see here. You see that we're down to 121 megabytes for this video, which is really good. Now we're gonna skip the advanced settings. I don't think that any of you guys will really use that keyframe distance. And of course, if you're dealing with VR, that would be for a totally separate video. Now, if I come down here to the bottom, use maximum render quality and use previews. Now, as you edit your videos in Adobe Premiere, previews are created from the clips um, as you render out footage to play them back in your timeline. Now you can check this box to use the previews if you like. I'm actually gonna leave it unchecked myself um, just because I don't really see a noticeable difference. But I imagine if you if your computer cannot handle um, the process and the rendering while you're editing and putting your project together in the timeline, then you're probably rendering out clips and then you would have previews that you can then check here and use those previews to render your final product. Now use maximum render quality. Um, that's just gonna give you, this is for anyone who wants to get that little bit of extra push. Now, to be honest, there's not a big difference here if you check this box, but for those people who just really strive for very high quality videos like myself, um, you're gonna wanna use maximum render quality. This is gonna take a little bit longer, uh, definitely depending on your hardware. But like I said, it gives you that very, it gives your hardware that little extra oomph that it needs to get the job done and put out a even higher quality video. Now, I personally, I choose this setting based on the video. If it's a gaming video, I'm most likely gonna leave this off, but for a video like this, or like a short film or anything like that, I'm definitely gonna use this setting to make sure that I'm getting the best quality that I can um, out of my video and out of my project there. So in this video, for example, we'll just leave that off, but that's what these two settings do in case you guys were interested. Okay, moving on over to the audio tab. Now in this tab, it's pretty straightforward. You wanna make sure that your audio settings also match the audio that was, re that was recorded. So I know that my microphone was set to 4100 um, hertz here as the sample rate. So I'm just gonna make sure that I set this to 44.1 hertz. I think I said 41 hertz, but 44.1 hertz. Um, here just because it matches my audio. Now there are audio devices out there that do 4800 or 48,000, excuse me, um, and that may be the case for you. So make sure that whatever you select here matches the rest of the clips in your timeline. That's just gonna ensure that you get proper audio at the highest quality possible. Now scrolling down in the audio section, you wanna make sure your audio quality is set to high, of course. No one wants low quality or poor audio. And you wanna make sure that your bit rate is basically set above anything or set anything above 192. It'll be set at 192 by default. I would just go ahead and rock with 320. It doesn't really affect the file size and the 300 um, kilobits per second is just gonna ensure that I have the maximum bit rate for my audio. I am like an audio file. I, I care how my videos sound. Um, so for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and push that all the way up. But anything higher than 192 is gonna sound okay. Um, some people say that they can't even hear the difference between 192 and 320, especially on the web, um, especially when uploading videos to YouTube. 
and that pretty much wraps it up now the last thing that we can do here is once you have all of your settings um, set to the position that you would like them you could go up here and press this arrow key here and save a preset and we'll just name this YouTube 1080p 60 and we will click OK and now the next time you go to export a video you can drop down this arrow here and you will have your custom made preset there are other presets here that you can use, like I said, but this one we just tailored to our video here and to YouTube, and we will have it saved here. So going forward, you guys will have that. So that's one cool trick. Now, the last thing I wanna recommend here is that you queue all of your videos to Adobe Media Encoder. Now, if you are paying for the Adobe subscription, or you have CS6 or anything like that, this software is included with it. And I'm gonna show you guys now as it loads up here, um, the reasons that I like it. There are just a couple things that I like about it. Um, to get started, it does allow you to queue up multiple projects to be rendered at the same time. So that's pretty cool. Let me drag this over here onto the screen. Okay, so now let me I'll enlarge it here. So now we're looking at Adobe Media Encoder. And this is the tip that I have for you guys. So if you guys are working on multiple videos um, like I do, sometimes I have, you know, two or three or even four videos that I will cut first and then I will just render them all at the same time so that way I can queue them up here in Media Encoder. I would have a list of all of my videos that I need to render. I would go ahead and hit the play button and all of those vid videos will be rendered and exported and be ready for upload to YouTube. I can just click render, render all four or five of my videos, step away from the computer because it does take some time. Um, go have a bite to eat, whatever it may be. Come back and all of my videos are done. So that's one one key and one um, advantage to using Media Encoder. And the last one that I would recommend is uh, that I recommend you using and queuing to Media Encoder is because it allows you to easily switch back between your CPU for rendering and your GPU. I do have a 1070, so I do use the CUDA accelerated with NVIDIA. Um, that just gives me a faster encoding speed and it, it allows my videos to render a lot faster. And yes, I do see the difference between just using my i7 6700K and using my GTX 1070. So that's a cool trick there. You can set this setting in Premiere, but like I said, it's a little bit easier to do it here in Media Encoder. And I would say the last advantage to exporting your videos in Adobe Media Encoder is the fact that you can pause and start your renders. So let's say you started to render a video, it got halfway done, but you decided you needed to either record another video, start a live stream, do anything like that, and you wanted to um, continue this later on, you could come up here to these two buttons here and stop your renders for now until you're ready to resume them at a later date. All right, so that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this tutorial, guys. Th that, those, <laughs> man, those are the best settings to export your video at a very high quality in Adobe Premiere Pro. Guys, if you wanna see more tutorials like this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Drop a comment below so I know you guys have and are enjoying these videos and I will do more videos like this. I'm pretty much um, becoming a pro at the Adobe Suite here, After Effects, Premiere, Media Encoder. If you guys have ideas for other tutorials or you guys would like to learn certain things with any of those softwares, give me a shout out, let your boy know. Until next time, guys, stay up, stay strong. I will catch you guys later. Peace out.